Welcome to another edition of The Sultan of Small Talk. I'm Chris Carbone. Today's message, I think, is going to hit home for a lot of you. A lot of you who either are entrepreneurs or are wannabe entrepreneurs and are looking for something to just get them inspired. And this was an inspiring message that came from the man of Mickey himself, Walt Disney, who said, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Easier said than done, but I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do it in this episode. So you're probably really concerned about how you can start a business on your own. It's not at all uncommon. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. I think intrinsically they do. And if you're going through that, maybe you just started or maybe this is your first year, maybe this is your third year. Either way, you just really wanna make sure you're successful. I'm gonna start talking to you as if this is your first week as being an entrepreneur because the challenge is all of the uncertainty. Let's talk about that. Let's unpack that a little bit. Some of the uncertainty is Where's the money gonna come from? And even if you do have some money that comes in, what about benefits? If you're inevitably going to be uh, supporting a family, like I, my situation, I'm supporting a family of six. I don't have enough training. I don't feel like I am good enough. And therefore, I don't think other people are going to think that I am good enough. That's the message that you keep telling yourself, that negative thought. And we need to dispel that right now. I don't know of anybody who's ever done anything unique in stepping out of their comfort zone that didn't have that sense of, I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but we gotta do it anyway. And that's essentially what the message of Walt Disney was saying in that quote, is stop thinking about it, stop getting in your head, and let's go ahead and put things into practice. That's the hard part, but it shouldn't be. It's just a matter of getting outside of your comfort zone. Personally, I can totally relate. I was asked one time when it was totally spontaneous, somebody says, can you help me find a buyer for all this spring water that keeps flowing from my house in upstate New York? And I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, maybe you can get someone like Poland Springs to buy it because it's just gushing out of my, out of my yard. And I'm like, all right, let me look into that. But with so much confidence, as if I do this all the time, I'm like, yeah, let's take this thing by the horns and let's run with it. I knew no contacts within the water companies. I knew nothing about the process. I didn't even know that there was such a thing as a water broker, but that's what I kind of called myself in the moment. And I only knew that I enjoy drinking Poland Spring, but that's pretty much my credentials right there. And this is what had happened. And wouldn't you know it that within a month and a half, I had hit the phones and I had tried some different email tactics, tried hobnobbing with people who I didn't really know too well, but I thought might know the right kinds of people. And sure enough, it does work out because in that month and a half, I had two different people show up. One who was the senior natural resource manager for Nestle Waters North America, and also the guy who runs Poland Springs Division. Now, they were there to test the water and verify whether or not this would be a great site for them to consider. What? I think the problem is we give so much credit to other people, we kind of boost them up as if they have it all figured out, but I think we diminish what we hold in terms of our own value. We always think that we're not good enough. I fall, I fall victim to that, sure. I mean, it still happens, but what you gotta remember is you are great, you are unique, you are going to bring something to this world that other people cannot bring. You've got a set of characteristics and qualities that you possess that other people do not. You just gotta go ahead and give yourself as much credit as you give everyone else. I think the other one that makes some sense is people worry about a fear of failure. Sure, definitely, that's, that's a resilient one that continues to play through a lot of people's lives. And that fear of failure is so strong that you just keep doing what you've always been doing because at least the comfort of doing something that kind of sucks is better than sometimes the worry that this other thing that you want to do might actually fall flat. And I got to tell you, I fail a lot. I fail amazingly well. But what I'm saying is I fail and I'm resiliently right back on my feet. Realistically, I have actually been fired from most job that I ever do. 
<laughs> More to the point, I really wanted to be a writer. This is when I first got out of college. I was an English major with this creative slant, and I thought I was gonna be a writer in New York City, which is what brought me to New York City from Florida. And I got this job at this quirky, at best, magazine, and I thought I was real big deal. Within three months, they had essentially let me go. And I really think it's funny because I was an unpaid intern and I'm really feeling embarrassed to tell you that I was fired from a job they didn't pay me anyway for. So I felt pretty bad that I didn't contribute enough to make up for my free paycheck. <laughs> But I bounced back. Look at if I could only, you know, aspire to like what happened in my failures at 22 years old, then I wouldn't have ever gotten to where I am now. And that's the great thing. There's always another page you can turn. There's always a way to get back up when you get knocked down. It's just temporary. The pain and discomfort of the possibility that it may not work to the aspiration that you have, it's okay. Like, what do you need? You need to go ahead and know you're striving for something that's really giving you life, giving you some passion to go ahead and excel towards. So what if it's choppy along the way? Or so what if it's not perfect? I think that's the best part. You can't see where you've gone if you haven't seen where you came from. I think. You just gotta have the path in front of you and walk it, walk it every day. If my example can be any kind of shining beacon of light for you, I gotta tell you, I had a number of different paths that I had taken before I started to realize what I was really good at and what I was really passionate about. And that's perfectly fine. You don't need to have this instinctive knowledge of what you're going to have as a destiny and a game plan. I originally, when I was in eighth grade, I was certain I was gonna be a comedian until I got to college and then tried it. And then after I struggled with it, realized I don't even really like being on the stage and it's a lot of pain and discomfort. So what's wrong with not having that fulfill in terms of being the lifelong plan? So we can pivot from there. I also thought that I was gonna be an attorney because my folks are both attorneys and they thought, I guess through some kind of genetic magic that I should probably be an attorney. So I kind of believed it for a second until I took one pre-law class and realized that's a sleeper. That is inevitably going to lead me to sleep through the entire year. So I didn't do that anymore. I think a lot of people just want to be comfortable. They just want to stay in their easy chair with regard to their career, even though it pains them that they're not doing the thing that really kind of fires them up. I think the way that I differ is just that I am willing to go ahead and jump at it. And even if that means I'm going to get a bunch of bumps and bruises along the way, I know I'm gonna dust myself off. And I actually have this like crazy optimism that it's not gonna be nearly as bad as I have thought it might be. And that's where I think people have the problem. I think they just work themselves up to believe it's going to be absolute awful. You gotta get out there and do the things that you really wanna do or else you'll be sitting on your deathbed, I think, wondering what could have been. Nobody wants that. I just want you to get out there and go for it. And I think I get a lot of inspiration for Tom, from Thomas Edison. I mean, he was the one who tried relentlessly to make a light bulb despite all of the odds against him. And he tried, I think, 10,000 different attempts till he finally got it right. The bulb that we use today and use uh, in, every, in every classroom, in every home. And I think what he said was, I have not failed. I just learned 10,000 ways it didn't work. That's the kind of, like, that's the kind of passion that you need to have to pursue it. And if you don't have the passion immediately, borrow it from somebody else, you know? Get some inspiration from videos and, and books and other people who have done it before you. Because the ones that keep you up at night reading about the inspiration could be the very story that you are going to inspire for other people. Okay, I gotta apologize. I'm not really good at this, much like a lot of the things that I do, but what I can tell you is I'm gonna get better. I'm going to persist. If you keep subscribing, that doesn't make any sense. If you keep liking and you subscribe to this channel, you're only gonna see me flourish. And then you're gonna say, even that guy could do it. And if I could do it, you guys can definitely do it. Nailed it.
Nailed it.